Having shown you some techniques focusing solely on the fretting and the plucking hands, it only seems right that we should now start to work on combining these two new skills. In this session, I'll show you an exercise to help coordinate the two hands and get them working together as one unit. But first, I'd like to share with you some knowledge that'll help with the exercise and further improve your fretting hand technique. Hopefully you've been living with your bass long enough to realise that when tuned to pitch, the strings create perfectly straight lines along the length of the fingerboard. However, if we just look at the profile of our fretting hand for a second, you'll notice that each of the fingers are different lengths. If we were to draw around our fingertips, we clearly end up with a distinct curve or a half moon shape. Now, there's a potential problem here as the strings are straight and our hand profile's curved. So what do we do? Well, what I'd like you to do is just create a straight line across your fingertips, just like this. To achieve this shape, I hope you can see that I'm simply bending each of my fingers at different amounts. As my little finger's that much shorter, notice how I'm keeping it straighter. Whereas, I've bent my two longer middle fingers much more in order to match up with the length of the little finger. You can clearly see that now there's a straight line that links all of my fingertips. What I'd like you to do now is offer this new fretting hand shape up to the neck. Start by placing it on the G string so that your little finger is on the 12th fret and your other fingers occupy the three frets below like this. Just get used to resting your fingertips on the strings. With little to no effort, you're actually already covering four frets or four different pitches with the fretting hand. And I hope you can appreciate that this is made all the more easier by pre-bending each of your fingers ever so slightly. In essence, the shape of our hand now marries up to the straight line of the string. Just take a moment and get used to moving the shape to the other strings and also to other positions across the fingerboard. As you move, try to cover these four fret areas, but please remember that by bending your fingers, you shouldn't be introducing tension into the hand. Your fretting hand, as we've already learned, should always be nice and relaxed. This brings us nicely onto the exercise. So, start with your index finger on the third fret of the G string, which I hope you're now beginning to associate with the note of a B flat, and position your remaining fingers to cover a four fret area like this. Don't overstretch though in an attempt to cover each fret, as the fret spacing is much bigger at this end of the neck. Instead, just allow your fingers to hover over them comfortably. What I'd like you to do now is just play these four frets in sequence, starting from the index finger and ending with our little finger. Similar to how we played the open strings at the bass, I'd like you to use alternate fingers on the plucking hand as we play the sequence and begin by always leading with your index finger. To help you better understand, just play along with me as I repeat this four fret sequence three times. As we play, make sure you're using the good fretting and plucking techniques that I've already shown you. Okay. After four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Hopefully, you've now got that pattern under your fingers, so let's develop this a little further. Starting with your index finger on the note of B flat again, I want you to play our four fret sequence, but this time just play it once, ending on our little finger like this. This time, for every time we repeat the sequence, I'd like you to start at a fret higher. So we move our index finger up to the 4th fret and play again. Keep repeating this process and moving the sequence up a fret until your little finger is on the 12th fret or the octave G. But please remember that as we run this sequence, you should be using alternate fingers on your plucking hand. Let's just play this again slowly, starting with our index finger on the B-flat, and we'll end up when our little finger reaches the octave G. Okay, again after four. 
One, two, three, four. Okay, now that we've made it up to the twelfth fret, I'd like you to now reverse the sequence so that you're this time playing down the neck, like this. Again, every time you finish playing a four fret group, move your fretting hand down a fret and repeat the sequence. This time we're starting on our little finger. Keep going with this until you're back where you started with your index finger on the B flat. Let's just play this new sequence together so you can get an idea of how it feels under the fingers. So, starting from the octave G on our little finger, here we go. One, two, three, four. Now, let's put all this together and play the entire sequence up and down the fingerboard. This time, I'm going to use a metronome or click track to help us keep a steady time, or to use another musical term, a steady tempo. Once we've completed the exercise up and down the G string, I'd like us to then continue on and repeat the same process on the D string, the A string, and we'll finish on the E string. Okay, I'll count us in after we hear four clicks from the metronome. <laughs> 